Well, good evening. Hi, this is Scotty Sanders. I hope you're able to join me tonight. If you, if you are able to make it, go ahead and let me know that you have jumped on. Won't you go ahead and do that? Just post your name that you're here. Say hey, say hello, say hola. If you know Chinese, you can put it in Chinese. I'll get a translation on that. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to be talking about self-care. I'm going to be talking about the five building blocks the five building blocks to self-care. And all these five building blocks are things that I really try to pay attention to. I wanna make sure that I'm doing these and I'm practicing these. So I'm not just sharing with you something that I heard or I read. These were things that I actually pay attention to. So again, I'm gonna be talking to you about self-care and these five critical building blocks. Okay, so it's one of those things that if you delay, you will pay in these areas. So you don't want to delay. You want to be doing these things and to different degrees. Okay. Again, my name is Scotty Sanders. Thanks for joining me. If you've joined me, let me know. Just say hey or hello. Just let me know that you've jumped in. Again, some of you know me. I'm an international leadership consultant. I love getting to develop leaders. See, my purpose in life is to encourage and to empower others to live, lead, and to finish well. So the whole purpose behind these Facebook Lives are to help people to lead themselves well so that they can lead others well. So thank you for joining me tonight. We're about to dive in here in just a moment. So I'm again talking to you about self-care. I'm gonna be sharing with you these five building blocks to self-care. So if you're ready to dive in, again, let me know if you've joined in. So again, this is Scotty Sanders, to, Scotty Sanders coming to you live and talking to you about these five building blocks of self-care. And so the first building block is this, and I think Kevin Lyman is probably going to jump on any minute and he'll start posting this or someone else on our team if he's not available to do that. So, uh, and by the way, be listening to the best takeaway or the best quote of the night. If you post that and we, I decide you've got the number one, I'll repost it, give you credit for that and send that out to everybody. In fact, last week, Jennifer Zimmerman, uh, I can't even remember what the best quote was. You can go back and look at uh, the Facebook thread and you can find it, but she gave the best takeaway or the best quote. Jennifer, thanks for doing that. And thank you, Jennifer, for sharing this with others. And many of you do that. And I really appreciate the ones that take the time to share. Okay, now back on track. The five building blocks to self-care. So here's the first one. It's emotional. All right. So when I talk about emotional building block, let me share with some some insights related to this emotional building block. And listen, if this emotional building block is not in good shape, it impacts really every facet of your life and all the other building blocks. Okay. So here's here's one thing to consider: is being involved in unhealthy relationships. If you're involved in unhealthy relationships, it's going to impact you emotionally. It just will. If you're in a situation where you have someone in your life that is abusive or controlling, or if they influence you to do wrong things, make bad decisions, you need to get rid of that relationship. If you're in in unhealthy relationships, that's going to impact you emotionally. So that would be one of the things that I would say you need to be careful with. Uh, Another one would be... uh, and I want you to follow with me for a second. So think about just kind of how your mood and your mindset goes. So I want you to think about when something happens and it doesn't go your way, maybe maybe something in work or even something at home, and maybe initially you can get disappointed. So I want you to think about disappointment and then discouragement and then dis- depression. And this is something that I've always tried to kind of gauge with me. There are times in my life that someone, it may be someone in my family or someone that I work with that I get disappointed or something that I'm working on that didn't happen right and I get disappointed. Now here's the thing, especially, especially if you're a leader, be very careful you don't move to that second stage with this, which is discouragement. And here's why. Discouragement, people can pick up on that. People can tell when you are discouraged And that has a way of being somewhat contagious to other people in your family and on your team. Disappointment, live there a little bit, but just be guarded that you don't live in discouragement too long. And that third stage is depression. And listen, that's a real thing. 
that many people deal with. I know a number of people that deal with that. That's a real thing. Let me just tell you, if you find yourself there, don't do that alone. You need to communicate that to the people that you care about to give you support. And there's ways and things that can happen today to help you to mitigate that and even eliminate that in time in your life. But that's part of that emotional checkup that you want to be careful with, all right? So, so another one would be, do you have anger issues? Do you find yourself getting really angry over little things? And I would say, if you're shouting a lot, that's a problem. You know, do I get angry sometimes? Yes. But I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to try my best not to get that out of control, that I'm shouting or saying things that are hurtful or painful. I'm not saying that's never happened. But if it does, there's usually something else that's going on. So be careful with anger issues. Back into the emotional part. So here's a couple things kind of on the, how do you improve that emotional building block? Here's something that I practice every day. And, I, and, I, I, and almost without fail, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take time in the morning and I'm going to complete my, my plan for the day. And when I complete my plan for the day, in some ways it gives me a win already as I begin the day. W-I-N. I have already won before I begin my work. Emotionally, it sets me up for great success. Because I've taken time to think about my goals, my purpose, what I'm passionate about, the things that I'm grateful for. And so in a lot of ways, emotionally, it just sets me up for much greater success. I want you to try that. Take some time and try that. Write down what are the, your top priorities for that day that you need to get done. I only list three things. That's what I do. And listen, Kevin, Kevin will list for you probably if he's available. He'll list for you our, my book called, it's a little short ebook called Hacking Your Life. And it's a simple formula on how you can win every day. All right, so Kevin, if you'll post that. If not, we'll make sure we post that later on, okay? And so again, begin the day with a win. Here's something else that I build in to, to make sure I'm paying attention to this emotional building block in my life. And it's this. Take a couple vacations during the year. About three or four weeks ago, I took 14, 15, I say I took, I was part of, I helped coordinate the trip and help fund some of it, but it's because it's so important to me. So go on a family vacation that you involve more than just your, your uh, immediate family, but I involve, you know, my grandkids, my kids, my wife, my in-laws, 14 or 15 of us went away for about six days and we had a terrific time. We got to encourage each other. We got to support and listen and just Know that they're there. It gives you tremendous emotional support to do that. In a few weeks, my wife and I will be going to Destin, Florida, Cindy, and we'll spend about six days. We kind of make it somewhat of a study leave as well. We'll do a lot of reading and studying, but it's just a great way for us to connect. That is an emotional piece for me. That's a building block. It, it refuels me to a certain extent. So that's the emotional block. So let's talk about the second building block, and that is the intellectual piece, okay? So what do I mean by that? So the intellectual building block on this self-care, and let me, let me back up for just a second. The best way that you can take care of others is to take care of yourself. One of the most unselfish, one of the most selfish things you can do is not take care of yourself, all right? I'm serious. It's really being pretty selfish. You have a responsibility. If you want to if you want to take care of others, make sure you're taking care of yourself. All right, let me, I just want to interject that. Very important. I'm highly motivated to take care of myself so that I can take care of those around me, mostly my wife. I have a tremendous responsibility there, but I also want to be able to influence my grandkids. And I hope if I'm blessed, I get to influence my great grandkids. I want to take care of myself so that I can take care of others. So let's talk about this intellectual piece. Again, back to taking care of yourself. If you're not growing intellectually, you don't have a lot to offer other people. And you should always be wanting to add value to the people around you and to your family that you can pour into them, that you can have an intellectual conversation. So part of doing that would be study. Okay, I make a point, I typically study on average, I know you're going to say that's crazy, two hours a day. Now, I've got my master's degree, but after my master's degree, I realized I really need to start studying now. Studying just began seriously after my formal education. It really did for me. Study. I want to read books, 
and then I want to read blog articles. I want to read articles. That's one of the ways. Also, I have four go-to podcasts, part of my study that I do. I'm going to uh, listen to podcasts, usually four different ones. Some of those happen every week. Some of those happen every month, but there's four go-to. And then another piece of that piece of that intellectual. So you got study, you have podcasts, would be online courses. I try to take at least one online course a year. Now that can range anywhere from thirty or forty dollars, and I spend as much as three thousand dollars for an online course. And I've not ever taken an online course that I didn't think to myself, "This helped me." Now I'll be honest: when I spent the three thousand dollars, I had to really say, "That's a lot of money." Did it really help me that much? And it did because I was able to use that and parlay that into tens of thousands of dollars helping other people, okay? So online courses, seminars and conferences. Now I used to go to quite a few seminar and conferences, but now there's so many other ways that you can learn. I don't do as much of that, but you might wanna do that as part of your company or your organization. And then here's something else I always try to do when I'm studying. See, when I study, you know what I'm thinking about? How can this help you? And I'm being serious. How can I pour into someone else? What can I take from this book, this podcast, that I can take now and share with someone else or take that idea and make it where I can make it more mine that I can communicate because I have such a heart to teach and train others. So part of my intellectual piece is thinking through as I learn, how can I pour that into other people? So that's the second building block. And so the third building block is professional. Now that's kindred to the intellectual, but it doesn't have to be professional on your intellectual. You could want to just learn and grow and have nothing to do with your professional career. And I think when you can line those up, it makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about the professional. Here's some things I would suggest to you. On the professional building block for self-care, get out of your comfort zone. That's where you're stretched. Okay. So that's the first part there. Get out of your comfort zone. Second, look at the best practices in your industry slash look at the best practices outside of your industry. Now, when you look at best practices outside of your industry, what you'll need to do, and I've done this on several things, is that you'll have to cross appropriate best practices outside of your industry into the industry you're in. And I love getting to do that. I really do. I did that with Ritz Carlton. I got certified through leadership with them. So I took some of their best customer services teachings and I cross appropriated that into the work that I do. It's been awesome. I've used that for, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 years now. That's an example. All right. So another one would be uh, network with others. Connect with other people. What are different networks and groups that you can do? Now, I'll be honest. I like networking with people, but I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a groupie. And to say, I don't tend to join things like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just not me. You know, it's something that I used to do some, but I, I didn't enjoy it that much. But I've got a network of, you know, peers and I've got a network of people that I connect with, that I speak to, and we bounce ideas off of each. So kind of an informal, if you will, network of friends and, and associates and strate what I call strategic relationships. I've got a number of strategic relationships. They're part of my network. And then let me mention to you about Roundtable. And let me, let me say something to you. I meet with a board of directors for one of my nonprofit. You know, we, we meet mostly, almost every month it seems like. I've got another board we meet about three or four times a year. But my board of directors, that's like a round table for the organizations that I lead. It really is. But a round table would be a group of people that you can sharpen each other. Iron sharpening iron. You're learning from each other. Best practices, how to solve problems. So think about a round table with where you are. And let me just mention, this would be a little bit of a teaser and I, I've not made a decision about this. If I get some feedback, that, that's some interest, but I'm, I'm interested in starting working with a, an organization that I would start doing professional round tables, probably do one or two in the Dallas Fort Worth market. And let me just say to you, this wouldn't be this freebie. You get to come hang out with Scotty for a lunch meeting. This would be something you'd have to invest time and money in, but you'd be learning from a a leadership consultant, someone that I like to think I know what I'm talking about and something that I can pour into you, plus some great curriculum that would be used there. If you'd be interested in a round table, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, I'd be, 
I'd be interested to know if you'd be interested. That may help tip the scales in that direction. So I'm interested in doing a couple of those in Dallas-Fort Worth, and I might consider doing one in the Washita Parish area in Louisiana, go back and visit family and meet with a group of business people there. So it'd be something that'd be my group I'd meet with once a month, pour into a half a day, and then available as needed. So I'm looking at a roundtable. There's some real benefits in being a part of a roundtable. And then another one under the professional would be mentors, okay? I've got certain mentors. My mentor, someone that mentored me for over 20 years, you know, he passed away several months ago, was Marvin Smith. I still remember the times that we had together. They were precious times where he would just pour into me. Here's a guy that was a senior VP of a multi-billion dollar company. And then I have some other guys that mentor me, some from a distance, some up close and personal, but that's something that can help you. So that's, that's the third one. So we got the emotional, we've got the intellectual, we've got the professional, and here's the fourth one, and it's the physical, okay? I, I've moved it pretty far down the list, but it's important. If you're not taking care of yourself physically, it's gonna make a difference in your life. It is a building block. So I'm gonna give you some real practical things here. Nothing, nothing, nothing transformational, and my thing is, practice it, do something here. So first is, make sure you get good sleep. Sleep is so important for you. So make sure you sleep, get adequate sleep. I used to operate when that five and a half, six hour sleep, and I thought I was Superman that I can do that, but really that was dumb. It was dumb. You really need seven to eight hours sleep. Some people need more than that, and that's okay. Get adequate sleep, you know what you need. Don't, don't run on the margins too much. Second, stay hydrated. Listen, I think in Dallas-Fort Worth, we've, had, we've averaged like 105 degrees for the last week or 10 days. I'm drinking as much water as I can get down. In fact, there you go. I feel better already. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of fluids. You, we're made to drink lots of fluids. Now, it doesn't need to be alcohol and caffeine and too much of the bad stuff necessarily. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink alcohol, but stay hydrated. Eat healthy or at least sensibly, all right? Eat healthy or at least sensibly. Be smart about that. And then have some cardio and strength training in your physical routine. Usually I do strength con strength conditioning type stuff three days a week and I may add an, an and cardio. So I'll do cardio and strength training three days a week then I may throw in one or two more days a week with just some additional cardio. So typically four or five days a week, I like to do exercise, three days of that, it would be strength training. All right, so that's the physical piece. Now, so let me go ahead and just tell you this next one is a building block. So I've covered four and that, let me just recap, emotional, intellectual, professional, physical, and the fifth one, and I think it's very important, and again, knowing where I come from, this is extremely important to me, would be the spiritual building block. Now listen, some of you watching this, that may not mean anything to you, but it means something to me, and it is a, it is a rock and a foundation for me. So here are the things that I practice spiritually. So if this doesn't resonate with you, you know, I just would say, you know, do some meditation, do some yoga, whatever works for you on that. But for me, very important that I begin every, one, every day I spend in prayer, but before my foot ever hits the floor, as I'm still lying in bed when I wake up, and I usually wake up 30 minutes before I need to get out of bed, I spend time in just prayer, and it's so good for me to just do that. Right there, just focus in, no distractions, and I spend 30 minutes in prayer typically. And then following that, I'll go into, and I'll start reading, and typically it's a devotional or the Bible, but I'll read usually somewhere between 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll take some time planning and thinking through my day, and I have some reflection time, and I just listen. I just listen. What did I read? What do I understand? What, am I, what do I need to do? And that's very, very important to me. So those are the, the five building blocks. So let me make sure I've got them. So we've got the emotional building block. We've got the intellectual building block, the professional building block. We've got the physical building block, and then the spiritual building block. Those building blocks is how you have self-care. It's how you care about yourself. And when you care about yourself, then you're able to care about others. You're selfish when you don't care about yourself. When you care first about yourself, then it gives you that opportunity 
to care for others. Now, let me give you some practical tips. Now, this is me just kind of getting it down. What are some practical tips about this whole self-care? So let me just rattle some off pretty quick, okay? Because I'm going a little long here. Your work should be something you're passionate about. Let me just say to you, if you're not passionate and enjoy your work, you need to do something else. That'll kill you. It's no fun. Why would you want to just live for the weekend or when you get a vacation? You need to enjoy and be passionate about your work. Second, make eating and exercise doable. Don't try to do something that's not doable for you. Don't make it a bridge too far. Make it where it's something, you know, I can do this. It's not unreasonable. Third, stay away from toxic people. I'm going to leave it at that. You probably can think of somebody right now, okay? Stay away from toxic people. Four, focus on what you do have, not what you don't have. We put all of our focus on the thing. I wish I had this and this. Don't focus on that. Be grateful and thankful. Focus on what you do have. And then keep things in perspective. If you live in the United States, do you realize how blessed you are? If you're, if you're even able to watch my Facebook Live, you've got technology at your access. You have training available to you that people in most places don't have access to it. They don't. Keep things in perspective. Things are usually not near as bad as you think they are, and sometimes not nearly as good either. Here's another one. Be okay with saying no. My wife has struggled with that through the years, so I, I had to basically say, okay, babe, I'm going to help you out here. You don't commit to do anything significant. I'm not saying she had to make a decision for me about what to eat. No, I'm talking about things that she had to commit her time to. She would talk to me and I'd help her to say, is this really something you need to say no to? So I'd help her to say no and she would go back and say, hey, I talked to my husband about it and, and you know, we've decided with my priorities, that's, that's a no. And be okay with that. And here's number seven, last one here. Be comfortable in your own skin. Be comfortable with who you are in your own skin. Don't try to be someone else. If you'll practice those practical tips in your self-care, that's going to make a huge difference just by doing that. Okay, now here we go. Best quote, best takeaway for the night. I want to hear several, I want to get, I want to see several of these. There's a lot to pull from here. Best quote, best takeaway for the night. Share that and I'll repost and give you credit for the best one. Okay, now again, I'm asking you to do this. There's a share button that you can hit and when you do that, you can share that with others. Several of you have shared this and you put a little note on there. Make sure you watch this. You enjoyed it. That encourages me. I think this is something you ought to consider sharing, okay? Because one of the ways on the intellectual piece is that you can, you know, again, you improve your intellectual building block is that you teach others. This is a tool that you can use to teach others because there's, there's hundreds of people that you may know that I have no relationship with when you share this you're able to teach them something, hopefully of value, okay? Now listen, I hope you have a great rest of the week, and I hope you'll pay attention. Take care of yourself. When you take care of yourself, it helps you to take better care of others. I'm going to be leading well to the next time we get together. So next time, hope I've heard some good news from you. Make sure you share it. Make sure you post the best quote or the takeaway for the night. Take care.